Hi guys, good morning. Let's go wake up the chickens. Listo. Listo, listo. What are you doing? Come this way. Come on, let's go. Good boy. Good boy, good boy. If this is your first time here and you're looking for tips on taking care of silky chickens, breeding silky chickens, or just love watching silky chickens, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell. We're going to take care of Ash's flock first. No pooping in the food. Ash always does his little rooster dance first thing in the morning. He'll do that little sideways gait towards one of the girls with one wing down. Good morning, good morning. Hi, Ash. Hi, good boy. Hello, handsome boy. Hi, handsome boy. So Ash's flock consists of three buff girls, I know, you know, and they are Gronk, Amandola, and Edie. And, and then yep. there's also a little splash girl in here yeah, who like is she, Angel, and hot. she has a crossbeak. So none of these chickens are used for breeding. They yeah, are our pet flock, and we love them. It's like 20-something, I think. Hi, babies. So it was a hungry night, wasn't it? Hungry night. Does mama have an egg? I don't see one. No, oh, no, no egg. <laughs> so you have to keep these girls in line, don't you, Ash? Say, so, yep. Keep them in line, mama. Have to keep them in line. Take care of your girls. Hi, handsome boy. Hi, mama's handsome boy. You guys have kale coming today. You guys will like that. Now into the covered chicken yard to take care of everybody else. Water. Watch, Ozzy's gonna escape the pen just as my back's turned. 
sneaky boy. Now watch Ozzy. He can see Ash's girls through the fence and he is just flirting up a storm. He has really missed them. They used to be part of his flock actually for a couple of years. I'll let you stay out. Oh, there goes Cindy. from you. None. Two months. Two months. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, babies. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Baxter. Mama hears you. If you haven't noticed already, we have a cowbell on Baxter. That way by sound, I can kind of tell where he is and if he's wandering off too far. So you'll see me randomly yell to him. And as you can see, I'm just making sure everybody has fresh water. And the water I'm doing right now is shared between the two pens inside. So I only have one for them and one full is really good and lasts all day. his wings like crazy. And it might have to do with me. Him and Cindy haven't been out for probably a couple of weeks. They're in this brooder cabinet. It's really open. And they can see the other ones because they put screens up, but they haven't really had a chance to hang out. And I think he's doing it because of the tripod too. A little dominance display with the wing flapping. Like 
like a cement step up to their water and somebody likes to roost on it. So it's just poop every morning. Can you tell we have six roosters? Is crowing constantly. Good morning. We're going to give some of this to you guys. Let's show you guys how everybody's doing. So Ozzy and Cindy are gonna, oh, see, there goes the wing flapping. So Ozzy with his girl Cindy, they're both blue colors. And they've been in that bottom brooder cabinet because I have been gathering eggs but I've gathered about 15 eggs from them in the last uh, couple of months and none of them have been fertile I mean fertilized I them and stuff and actually one batch should have been hatching in the last couple of days but none of them developed so with spring coming in a little bit more light a little bit more freedom than the box. Maybe that'll stir some stuff up. And then, and I think this is all different. Hey, you guys, hey, no jumping. No jumping. No, get, come on, June. Get in, get in. Oh. Here's our white pen. Things got shuffled around. But that beautiful boy in the back is going to be our main rooster for the whites because he's just fabulous. And then these three little girls and their head poofs look a little funny because I trim them. They literally can't ever see you because their poofs are so big. And one of, actually, that little girl is going to go with our other white rooster. <clears throat> I think they are just the different types of whites. So we'll see, we'll get there. Still trying to figure out space. <laughs> and I think they're learning bad habits from like June and Elvis because June and Elvis are very talky. Stay. Stay. Is it just somebody walking? Uh -uh. Stay. Good boy. Just somebody walking? Who are you howling at? I know you're a good boy. You're a good boy. I know I wasn't paying any attention to you, was I? I was chickening. Oh my goodness. I was chickening. I was a good boy. You are such a good protector. Yes, you are. You're such a good protector. Somebody just walking up on the road. Is that what got you? I don't see anybody. All right, you come down. You stay here with Mama. Come on. Let's go back. I got chickening to do. I don't want the girls to escape. <sighs> Oops. 
see? <laughs> she was trying to escape. Escape, escape. All right, you need a little bit more food over there too. Hear the change in his tone. He was showing her a treat. He probably found it and called her right over to it. <laughs> it's like, here's a treat, here's a treat. I'm gonna try and catch it on video, but he will take a piece of a treat and then put it down in front of his girls. And I've also seen him hold it in his beak for them and actually feed them. I'll try to catch that. Sorry, Ozzy, you're okay. You're okay. Baxter, stay here. I am putting hardware screens up over the door openings that gives them a little bit more airflow and a little bit more light in the coop. <laughs> Their screen is on. And here's Johnny's flock. Hi, Johnny. Hi, June. Hi, good girl. And there is Daisy. And if you see over there, that little gray fluff is Miley. And I think she's laying an egg. And Elvis is still in here. Elvis is right over there in the corner. There she is. She's laying an egg. Elvis is the one in one of our last videos where I had found her. She had pretty much lost a bunch of her feathers. And I thought it was her... Uh, it was the rest of her flock, but it ended up being her. And her and Daisy, in the back there, you can't see it. But her and Daisy, I wasn't paying enough attention to their food, so they were lacking calcium, so they were taking it from their feathers, from themselves. So I quickly changed to a feed called Feather Fixer, which is something you usually give the chickens during molting in the fall. And within a month, they had all new feathers. They both look fabulous. And now I've switched the food to layer feed. Um, I had been using all flock, which means it has less calcium because you can use it for a, different, a bunch of different birds. Like young birds and roosters don't need a lot of calcium, but laying hens do. And so I fixed that and actually put a reminder in my phone when I make those changes. And the feed is all from the same brand and stuff, so I try not to change things up too much, but this was necessary. Hi, Elvis. Hi, my good girl. And now that I know where she's laying, I won't be grabbing her egg. And when she, she will be going back to her flock, but we have some, I need to do a transition and I'll cover that. But it means I'm gonna have to put a dog crate in with her her other flock mates so they get used to her because I did see I did try to put them in and they just attacked her she had to fight for herself so I, I thought maybe there was a chance that uh, they would accept her because they've grown up with her <clears throat> but nope She's been out of their flock for close to two months and I'd never seen it happen. So I just wanted to see, and I stayed with her the whole time, but, uh, yeah, we're going to have to do a slow transition. So basically she's going to be in a crate in that area, but we have some really cold temperatures coming. So I don't want to do it during that time. I think about a week of cold nights. So I will put her in there so they see her every day. She sees them every day. And I think I'm going to do about two weeks. I found like two weeks tends to be pretty good. I'll let have her. I'll give her some time outside too. I'll just lock them up early and stuff. So, uh, yeah. 
That's what's happening. <laughs> so a lot of the eggs that are hatching right now are from this flock. This flock is, I can't ever remember the pens guys, pen two. So we get blue and black chicks from these guys. And I gathered them for a while. And uh, so they're hatching right now. And so I'll show you guys what's going on inside. So guys, I'm going to change up the format on our videos a little bit. I realize when I watch other channels that I love to watch, I always kind of wish that there was a little bit more raw, not quite so edited, but I just want more. Let me know what you think. And these little boys, so these little boys get some outside time today too, because they've been in here for a little while without it. Hi. So this little white boy is uh, related to the other white uh, flock. And this little boy was a hatch from an old flock, like Ash and his old flock. And it was just an experiment because I had never used Ash as a as a rooster for hatching and I just let his mama she had an egg so I just let her keep it so he hatched last August and to be honest guys he hates my guts like hates my guts even as a chick I've tried holding him and all that kind of stuff and he actually beats up this rooster he is definitely leader of the flock but he needs to find another home I'm not going to use him to breed he has what's called leakage so he's got i don't know if you guys can see it. he's got a little bit of brown around his neck and stuff but his papa does too so his papa's ash and ash has a lot of leakage so once i find a place for this little boy here one of the white girls is going to come over with this boy yeah, because I think they're the same white color. Yeah, we'll see. So these guys are too young just yet. They're seven months old. So um, still too young. I don't think I'll be gathering any eggs from these guys until summer, even maybe midsummer. But he's a good boy. He's very... He tends to be very needy and comes right up to me. He's a good boy. Yes, I'm a good boy. All right, we'll see. But this is the first time I've bred whites. And there's gold whites and silver whites. And I didn't know to mark them when I first got them. It was really obvious when they were chicks. So I'm just going to go by brightness. Hello, good boy of their feathers and I'm pretty sure I have a girl that's his color. So we'll see. See, we'll see. You know what, babies? Cause he's pretty perfect. It's just, he's not as poofy. Like he isn't quite the body shape. Like if he had more poof, but he's still young too. So he could fill out. We'll see. I'm also gonna have to have a name for him, you guys. Hopefully I'll do that next week. Huh. And he just is going to go somewhere else. He hates me. And I'm going to have to scoot over Ozzy and Cindy because I want them to stay over here in this other section. All right. Let's see if I can do this. See if I can do this. You guys ready? You ready? Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on, good boy. Come on, good boy. There we go. There we go. Everybody's all set. Uh 
definitely you can tell it's coming to the end of winter because it's just a mess in here. Oh well. And you guys, we had really bad winds <clears throat> the last few days. So it ripped off one of my panels and tossed it across the yard. So I pulled that side plastic up a little bit, but it's getting into the time that I would start pulling the plastic off. So it works, it's fine. There's plastic on top of this, so if it rains, it's still protected. We're getting some warm days. So because of all the moisture with the snow and stuff, I really start uh, peeling back the plastic. I don't want all the moisture to be staying in here. I made that mistake our first day, or our first year having chickens, and I had two sick chickens because of it. So they're already acclimated to really cold temperatures. We've had below zero a few times, so they are used to it. So now my focus is to definitely make sure that as soon as, because we're starting to get into 20s, 30s, we're going to have a 40 degree day, 40 degree day this week. So the plastic starts getting peeled back and allowing any kind of moisture in here to escape. It's March, so it's a really good thing to do. Learn from my mistakes. Baxter! Come on, let's go! Oh. Oops, there you are! Hi! What you doing? Here's the field, guys. So, our chicken flocks will eventually get on here. I have snow blown. <laughs> snowblowed, I guess that's the right term, areas to hopefully um, have them dry out sooner and not have two feet of snow on them. It's only about, I think, well, about a foot now, but I don't think I can do any more than this right now. Everything's really frozen and pretty solid. So, but I'll keep up on that as soon as we start getting some thaws and it may do it itself, but I want to really kind of get as much snow off as possible so I can start building the greenhouses down there. Well, the chicken coop greenhouses down there. Let's go inside. And here is what we got going on inside you guys. Hoping you can see it. I'm gonna use a flashlight. There's a baby in there. No, flashlight doesn't work. There's a baby. So it is hatching time. And this is what's called a little dun. The color is dun. I've never had this color before, but my breeding mentor, I bought a couple dozen and actually I think I got 30 something eggs from her. And she has a lot of different colors, so we're going to have a lot of different colors on the farm now. But Dunn is like a mix of, I think, chocolate and light chocolate. So we'll learn this one together. And these are all going to hatch at different times. There's actually a couple that I've pipped. I don't know if I can see if we can make it happen. Now, oh, maybe. Well, anyways, I will add a couple of the hatching videos to this one so you guys can see. But this one hatched last night. So it's only about maybe 12 hours old. And she seemed to be very needy already. She comes right over to me anytime I get near her. Hi, sweetheart. You are just the cutest thing. I just can't get over how cute you are. Yes, you are. 
Yes, you are a good girl. All right. And then, hopefully I can get this to work for you guys. There are two babies in here. So there is a black baby and then there's a blue baby. And sorry, you guys, it's not great. There's two in there. And the little black baby I've got to put, he was, she was by herself for a while and everybody else is a little behind hatching. So it's, she's been in here for two days now. And so she needs to go into the brooder soon. She's gonna need water and food soon. So unfortunately I gotta take her out to be by herself a little bit longer until this baby in there. <laughs> Wait, let's try the, all right. This is a pretty raw video, you guys. There we go. And the one on the left is black. And I believe this one on the right is gonna be blue. And that's the only two colors from Johnny's pen. This is Johnny's pen. You're only gonna get blacks and blues from this one. <laughs> so that little one was born sometime early morning because I was up at one and I got up at six and it was pretty dried off. So within that six hour or five hour time, that baby was born. I'm thinking close to when I checked that one. <laughs> the cats are having breakfast. So guys, we have about 50 eggs in between these two incubators. These eggs for right now are going to be uh, grown out so I can pick through and figure out who I'm going to add to my breeding flocks. So I'm using a method that I can continue to hatch basically on a daily basis. And what it is, is as soon as a chick or a few chicks hatch, I grab them out to put them in the brooder and then I replace them with new eggs. So this is a process called stacking and it is very different than the traditional hatching methods. And it's a little bit of a controversial uh, hatching method. Um, for one, you don't turn the eggs. It is a lot more, there's no, no turning eggs and no lockdown. And humidity stays the same all the way through. Temp stays the same all the way through. Um, I'm part of a group where a woman and actually a few other people have used this method for close to 10 years and they have higher hatch rates than they did using the traditional hatching method. So it made a lot of sense to me and it makes it a lot easier and so that's what I'm using. So basically it means too that I can do the continuous hatching. I don't have to wait with a bunch of eggs and store them. And sometimes eggs lose their viability the older they are. I can basically hold for a couple of days and then put them in. So we're gonna see. And don't tell Bill, but this is my new incubator that I bought a few weeks ago. This is our old incubator and it's, it's a lot harder to maintain um, temperature and humidity. And I think because I'm doing them side by side, I realized that fact. And this is what's called a hubabator. So I actually ordered another one of these. This is called the Nurture 360 and once everybody's who's hatched in here is hatched, I'm gonna sell this one. I won't be using this one anymore. So I actually have to go pick up the other one of this that I got and I haven't told Bill yet, but he doesn't care. <laughs> but this one was so easy or was much easier to maintain temp and humidity. 
I did wake up with it too low this morning, which I have to figure out how to maintain humidity overnight because we have that. So humidity in the house fluctuates with temperature too. So I have to figure out the trick for our environment to make this one work better. But I think we're okay. I checked it at one and humidity was great. And five hours later, not so great. So hopefully I didn't lose anybody because of that. The stacking method that I'm using was developed by a woman named Shannon Tyson. And I'm hoping I'm pronouncing her last name right. And she's been utilizing this method for about 10 years now. I'm going to leave down in the description the Facebook group that you can check out this method if you're interested. There's a lot of people having really good results with it. And I'm hoping to be one of them. So check them out. So guys, when I was talking about all the different colors that we're gonna get from these eggs, these are the ones that I bought from another breeder. They're gonna be chocolate. That little one is called Dunn. And then I think I have some blues and splashes in there too. And then, oh, lavender. So she has lavender and I have, I think five or six lavender eggs in here. So hopefully they hatch. Um, they're a little bit of a harder uh, breed to, I don't know, they have a higher mortality rate. So some breeders breed them and are trying to make it to where the mortality rate isn't so bad. And oh, look guys, that little pip is starting. Can you see the feathers right there? It's either the feathers or the membrane. But that one pipped yesterday and now this piece of shell is gone, which when I started these videos, it wasn't. So that one's gonna come soon. And I think that's it. So anyways, brand new colors to the farm. Of course, you guys will follow along. Look at this little baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. You are so cute. I just can't get over how cute you are. You're so cute. Yes, you are. She's like, where are my buddies? Hurry up and hatch. So that's that for these. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.